Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of BS for Build. I'm Chris. In this episode, uh, we're gonna focus on a couple different areas. In the last episode, we pulled the FA20 motor out. So to start on this episode, I wanna figure out what that means to the BRZ now, what kind of auxiliary systems are still gonna work, what we might need to focus on figuring out how to trick and different things like that. And I'll talk about how we're gonna run what's called a dual ECU system. Um, and then uh, I wanna test fit the 2JZ. We have our motor mounts here. Uh, I need to get the hardware for that all figured out and I would like to test fit it in the car if I can in this episode. That's the game plan, stay tuned. All right, so to get started today, uh, I'm gonna start by fiddling around with the BRZ's electrical system and seeing what still works and what still is kind of happily operating now that we don't have an engine in here. So the game plan for this build is to do what's called a dual ECU setup. So we'll be leaving the ECU, the CAN bus system, the everything from the BRZ in the BRZ to hopefully control the BRZ auxiliaries like um, electric power steering is one. Headlights, door locks, windows, those types of things, we're leaving all that in here. If I remember correctly from when I did the wiring harness on this car, it has three different what they call ECMs. So they have one to manage the engine, one for the inside, and kind of one for the rear. If I if I remember correctly, I'm not 100% sure. But anyways, so rather than like hard wiring all that stuff, now remember we're not going standalone ECU to try and make everything kind of talk to each other nicely. We're trying to kind of do this on a budget and see how we can wing it. So. The, the ECU will stay in the BRZ and that's what I want to go ahead and test first and then the ECU will come along with the 2JZ and then that will all sit in here and it will basically think it's talking to a dashboard and it, and it never will. Um, that's the game plan. So my dash isn't going to talk to the motor, the motor's not going to talk to my dash, at least not in a factory way. I'll throw gauges in there, I'll, I'll hit it with that type of stuff, but we are going to lose a lot of the niceties. And that is the reality of motor swaps, you lose a lot of nice things. You often lose air conditioning, we will lose that. Uh, you sometimes lose the heater, we might lose that. Uh, lots, lots of things kind of get cut. That's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to go ahead and bring the battery back in here, uh, introduce power back into the system, and I want to check out things like door locks, headlights, taillights, blinkers, windows, power steering, brakes, ABS, and alternator battery. Power steering may seem strange to some of you guys because you're like, wait, power steering, that's a hydraulic off of the motor. The BRZ has electronic power steering, so I'm hoping that we can keep that to still like operating the way it did before. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug it in, start fiddling around with things, and see what we can do. All right, well, not a brilliant start. The car is flat, 100% dead, no signs of life. So that's, that's the starting point. That's where I'm, I'm starting from. Uh, it's time to start doing some Googling and stuff and see what I can do to maybe bring it, bring it to life. Huh. All right, well, I knew that this was gonna be a very challenging project because I'm in way over my head. Let me be the first to admit that. But uh, I was really hoping it wouldn't start off so damn difficult. Um, it was a really simple issue. Uh, I, I kind of diagnosed it by kind of following around what the engine uh, wiring harness had on it and what it was doing uh, versus what we were left with. And there used to be a, uh, a cable going from the ground on the battery to a grounding point on the frame right here. And then, uh, so I grabbed my voltmeter, I tested out positive to ground on the frame and it had no voltage, so it didn't work. But now when I ground that out, if I hit the unlock button, uh, we have some electrical functionality now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fabricate a, uh, a long-term solution for this cable right here. Cause I also don't think it's, I'm not sure if it's dangerous to run a bunch of power through here, but since it's not grounded, it seems a little sketchy. So anyways, I'm plugging that. I'm gonna go ahead and fabricate a nice uh, hardcore cable to uh, do that job. All right, the factory options that we retained uh, are as follows. Hmm? Uh, door locks, uh, bonus of the keyless entry, which is very nice. Of course, you know, it, you wouldn't think it would go away, and it didn't, so that's awesome. Uh, we have headlights, they worked, tested them. Tail lights, they work. Blinkers, they're working. Windows work. We have steering, meaning the steering's not locked. 
but I don't believe we're gonna have power steering. Some research that I did while I was trying to figure out what I did wrong that shut off all the electrics um, led me to believe that we are not gonna get power steering in this without getting very technical on some computer stuff, uh, which I will do more research on as soon as possible. Uh, brakes, we have brake pressure and we still have brakes, but we're not gonna have ABS. Um, so make a note of that, no ABS. No big deal as far as I'm concerned. Um, we have heated seats, so we may not have a heater, but we will have heated seats. Um, and the alternator battery situation, uh, I don't know why I even wrote that on the list. because So the battery's got to get charged from the 2JZ's alternator. I have no idea uh, how those systems work, but I don't think they're that complicated. So I'll just have to figure that out as I go. What had me worried is that my old alternator setup has this cable that runs back to your power, um, and then this three-pronged dealy here, which I assume is just a sensor that lets it know if your alternator is failing. I'll, I'll dig into that more later, but it's impossible to tell now because we don't have an alternator. Derp. So, that's pretty cool. We got half of the electrics figured out, I guess. Did we get any important ones figured out? We got headlights. Yo, I got headlights. All right, moving on. All right, moving straight along to trying to test with the motor. I'd really, really like to test with this motor in the car and see if, for instance, the transmission's gonna fit in the transmission tunnel, uh, how far of the driveline extension or whatever we're gonna need to do with the driveline. I'd like to be able to take a look at that. And a bunch of other good stuff uh, happens with the test fit. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't start thinking like, oh, the build's so far along, he's already got the engine in the car. This will probably have to come in and out of the car like five, six, seven times uh, before we're done. But it would be great to get it in there at least the first try. That's the hardest one. So I have uh, motor mounts, engine mounts from CX Racing. Um, they come with zero instructions, so it's been fun trying to figure this out uh, by looking at pictures. But I'm pretty sure I got it down. I bought all the hardware. So now it's time to unbolt the stock motor mounts, uh, bolt up these plates uh, to another thing with a bushing in it, and then that'll sit inside this, inside the frame. And I'll show you it all right now. Okay, outside of being very, very confused, I've ran into the first uh, major roadblock, which is that the stock um, engine mount mounting hardware, these bolts right here, this kit comes with no hardware either, so it's kind of confusing. Uh, these bolts right here don't work because uh, the stock engine mount is much thicker than the new mounting plate, and so these bolts are basically too long. Once you have a thinner mounting plate, these bolts max out inside the engine block and they can't screw down. Uh, the plate. So I'm going to run around to the hardware stores around town and see if I can find some shorter version of these. And if I can't, I'll buy duplicates of these and then trim them up. All right, I've got a fancy... That wasn't supposed to happen like that. Got a fancy new bag of hardware on the floor and I'm ready to get back to it and finish up this mounting plate and then I'm going to switch over to the other side, take off the engine mount and then put on the mounting plate. It's terribly uncomfortable down here but I'm not putting it up on the hoist because it scares me. All right, this side of the engine and getting the engine mount out has been much, much more difficult. And let me show you why. So inside here, that's the engine mount right there. There's one bolt um, right here that was quite tricky to get out. It was really, really stuck. So I resulted to uh, using a pry bar, which actually uh, worked. Um, I was worried about snapping the bolt, but I figured I'd have to figure that out later. So anyways, got that bolt out. The other two on the other side are okay. There's a bolt underneath the oil filter hookup. So what you have to do is the oil filter, you have to move this oil um, dipstick line and then the oil filter has a oil pressure sending unit that goes in here and then this is actually acts as a screw. So you kind of take all that stuff out, fish this out of here. And this is interesting because it actually has, these are cooling lines on the side there that water flows through there. Uh, that's pretty cool. Had me worried at first, I thought I had water in my oil, but it's two separate units. That frees up that right there. And then that gives me access to that last bolt right there. So then I can get this engine mount out and then that's our aftermarket one that I'll put back in. So, took a little bit more time, 
lots of stuck bolts back here. There's an old, old motor. Things get really stuck in here, but we're getting very, very close. All right, I've ran into a real roadblock this time. It turns out that the plate that is out of these mounting brackets, there's a lot of different pieces. The first piece that I've been working on is a plate that you slap against the side of the block, you bolt in, it has one bolt that comes out of that and bolts from there to the bracket that then goes into the frame. Um, these plates, when I got this left side on, there's four holes in it and I got three out of the four and I figured, oh, okay, well, it's, maybe it's a universal plate. The third, uh, the fourth bolt doesn't need to be used. Then I came to the other side here and I got two out of the four and that started raising questions in my head and I started doing some Googling. So I bought these from CX Racing. In CX Racing's images that they show when they're building this car, it says it's good for a 2JZ GTE. They don't specify VVTi or not. I did some research and it turns out that different years of different models have different block bolt patterns. And I haven't been able to fully figure out if it's just between the VVTi and the non-VVTi or it's non-VVTi or, or maybe possibly VVTi US uh, models versus Japan models. There's a lot of different factors. It could be a year thing. It could be a country of origin thing. It could be just the VVTi versus the non um, thing. But in CX Racing's pictures, they had a VVTi car in there that they bolted these plates to the engine. So that's what kind of pisses me off. So here's my plan. Since it is just a plate, if all else fails, I can fabricate my own. I don't have the supplies right now, but to keep moving forward, I do have some stainless steel that's nice and thick that I cut a chunk off of that I can weld onto this plate to extend out so I have another hole to bolt to. So I'll have three on each side that then go just to one bolt that come out. So it's kind of good redundancy, I guess. You don't want to have these, these mounting points snap off the block, obviously, that'd be really bad. But I think three should be good enough to keep moving today. Then in the meantime, I'm gonna contact CS, CX Racing, see if they will send me the right plates or what I gotta do. If not, I'll just build my own. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that plate off, do a little bit of welding, a little bit of fabrication, and get my third mounting point onto it. Um, in the sake of the, the how-to side of the world, if you guys are doing this uh, and you order from CX Racing, just Make sure that you check your blocks uh, mounting points before you order and make sure that you get the right mounts, uh, the right brackets for your car. It'll be pretty obvious. They're either kind of arrow shaped, it's like four with one in front, or it's just straight up four. Mine's straight up four, others have this one further up front. So, all right, time to get started. <laughs> All right, well that welded up very easily and very nicely. I, I tacked it with the flux core, so you got a little bit of slag here and here, uh, but I was able to run a bead across there. And um, and then, and cool thing is, is I'm still seeing improvements with my welding. I think welding thicker metal is much easier. So, but this is a very, very hot piece of metal right now. To put it in perspective, this is, we're using over double the amount of heat and power that we used on uh, the exhaust stuff that we were working on earlier. So it's very, very hot right now. Uh, so I'm gonna let that cool off, then I will clean it up a little bit, and then I can get it back on the car. So we're gonna have, um, it looks like we're gonna go one, two, three on this one, uh, where before, you know, on the other uh, block it would have been one, two, three, four. Uh, now we're doing one, two, three. I think that'll be okay for the time being. I'm hoping to get the square one. The other one that they have for the other style of block is just a square. It's just boom and boom. That's the one that I'm going to get a little bit later on. All right, motor's ready to go, ready to be hoisted into place. So you can see that's what one of the motor mounts, engine mounts, sorry, looks like. You got that bushing right there and that attaches into one of these little tower guys right here. So before we lift the motor up and move it into the car, uh, this guy has got to go in here to meet up with its friends. So you can see that's where the old mounts were and you bolt that into there. This will get bolted. Bye, Felicia. Uh, this will get bolted into here like this and uh, that's where the motor sits in there. So you can see there's actually kind of like a lot of room for play on these different things. So that's my hope with uh, 
me hacking up that bracket is that if it is in the wrong spot or those brackets put the engine in the wrong spot, some of the play with the other pieces will give me room. Also, I'm gonna get the right bracket. Let me be clear with that. I'm going to harangue CX Racing and get the right bracket for my motor. Uh, okay, I'm gonna bolt these up and then bring the motor over. Well, I have failed. It's not in there. Um, why is it not in there? I need, I don't know, I need to do a couple things. One is I gotta trim the transmission tunnel. There's uh, some extra stuff in there from the where the old transmission bolted up. I don't need that in there anymore, so I'm gonna have to go in there and trim that, so I don't wanna like force this thing in there, and then it'll just take up space and get in my way from being able to do the work that I need to do. So that's one reason that I kinda hit the brakes, but also I'm having trouble getting clearance right down here, getting that transmission um, bell housing and stuff to clear the power steering rack and the sway bar uh, before then I can kind of lower this down and push it forward. It is absolutely a very, very tight fit to get this motor in there. All right guys, and with that, I gotta cut this episode here. It is way too late for me to be crawling under there and uh, cutting away that transmission tunnel. So, um, yeah, sorry, I, I do apologize. I always try and hit my goals, but I definitely ran out of time. I, I got so, totally sidetracked on um, making that motor mount plate fit, and um, some of these bolts got stuck on here real, real tight, and that was took me hours to figure that out, too. So uh, I do apologize, but we will get it on the next one, and uh, I'll bring another person in here. And my goal for the weekend is gonna be to try and actually kind of get it in here, and then maybe do a test start. Uh, but that may be a little bit advantageous. I got some serious wiring stuff to figure out, but lots of fun stuff coming. Um, but we also have to film the budget supercar unveiling. That is going to air Saturday, this Saturday. So check that out. Please like it, share it, spread it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I'm really excited about this one and, and the concept of what we're doing with the car and what the car is. I think it's gonna be really cool. And it's gonna be a lot of fun, I know that. So, and it might have something to do with what we're doing here. Who knows? Uh, so tune in for that on Saturday, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you want to help out and support, you like Beast for Build, you want to support, head over to beastforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop, pick up any of the merchandise there, like hats, key tags, We've got banners, we have BRZ banners in stock, um, we have a new shirt for this car uh, that we are designing right now, and that'll be out shortly. Um, if you want to find us in more places, we are BS for Build on Instagram and BS for Build on Facebook. Check us out there. Uh, yep, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. Peace!